Gato. We are Movie Menu Reviews, the only podcast that is approved by the CDC. On today's menu, we'll be practicing social distancing. Wow. <laughs> This is how we see topical. Welcome, ladies and gents, and everyone. I'm Hi, Dan the Man Munoz, host of Movie Menu Reviews, your weekly movie news or reviews podcast. Or I should say, Dan the Dan Demic Munoz. There you go. I'm joined by uh, <laughs> uh, other virus. <laughs> uh, other virus? Uh, I just get other virus? Uh, coronavirus? No. What? No, no, no. I mean, like, you can, get, you can call me Bubonic Z. Bubonic uh, Z. There you go, and 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 Mike is uh, syphilis. Mike. No, Mike is uh, the plague. <laughs> the Mike plague. Uh, uh, I, I like it. That's the name of my new band. <laughs> uh, so uh, we were intentionally going to do a review of uh, of Bloodshot. Oh, we're going to do a lot of different movies. And yeah, different films. Bloodshot, so, and then what was the other one? Uh, the Hunt. The, the Hunt. Hunt. Well, it was also going to be uh, uh, My Spy but yeah. before it got moved. I was looking forward to that one. And uh, so uh, the world is becoming a very interesting place to be at the moment. Yeah. Yes. It, it almost feels like we're living in a movie. Um, yeah. One would say Outbreak or World War Contagion. Z. Or contagion. I wouldn't go World War Z. We're not there yet. yet. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I mean, not saying we're far off. We're not, but we're yeah. not there yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Personally, I would be happy with Shaun of the Dead, but that's just me. All right. Yeah. Uh, but there is quite a few things that we need to cover. Yes. So in the last story, we talked about, or last week, we talked week? about yeah. uh, South by Southwest canceling. Uh, however, if you did submit, uh, there is some good news. Uh, it turns out that they will still continue to pass out awards despite the cancellation. So it turns out... Uh, uh, I'm just going to say that I was right. Um, I think I predicted this last week that they should have been doing oh, this. Congratulations. Thank you. I, I deserve well, the, a South by Southwest award. An official statement by <laughs> Janet Person, who is the director of film. Uh, she says the South by Southwest Film Fest immediately hunkered down to figure out what could we do to help and support the filmmakers whose work we love so much and who put their trust and faith in South by Southwest for their launch? Many of them have spent years on the work that they're bringing to South by Southwest. Uh, with with the cancellation, the filmmakers were left standed, stranded and scrambling. So her team continued and expand to all jury competitions. If the majority of the filmmakers opted in and juries were available, we know it's no substitute for the live South by Southwest event with its unique and fantastic audience, but it's at least some way to get attention for these wonderful films, which is also nice because these films are also still eligible for the Spirit Award. Short films are still eligible for the Oscars for next year. Even though if they weren't showcased uh, in a live venue, they are still qualified in that aspect. So, Yeah, and the way that they're doing it is through uh, uploading the films to a private server and allowing other people... Well, yeah, you're using the passwords. And, yeah, and, which is really cool. And I think that that's like we, we have moved to that point. Now, given... We should all watch movies and film and theaters. Uh, however, in, in this moment, well, in which we need an alternate way of publicity, this is a good way of doing it. Yeah. And uh, so and it, it makes you worth the work that you submitted, that it wasn't just a waste of time, uh, that you will be acknowledged. Which totally. Is, which, is, which is really nice. Yeah. Uh, Mike, what do you think about this news? I, th- I think it's good. I think it's good that they're, they've managed to figure out a way to to keep that going and uh i i think the filmmakers will appreciate it as well yeah yeah i think it's a smart idea i think them going through the process of figuring out how to do it i think all you know and and i've said this last week i feel like like the big studios should also you know at in this moment take on some of that you know online streaming sources we have you know, and start to release some of the bigger movies that are clearly losing money 
um, through that. I remember reading like about a year ago that AMC was working on this box, and uh, it was supposed to be like a. Cable. It wasn't. It wasn't AMC. Oh, it wasn't AMC. No, but was it, it was. It was no. It was no. Oh. It was no chain. But oh. there was. It was like Steven Spielberg was behind it. Oh, right, right. And right. Um, like, what was he behind it? I think so. I think, um, but it was a box that was supposed to be like you pay fifty dollars. Yeah, month. yeah, it was fifty. Uh, no, I think it was. Um, this may the thing that I read it was specifically tied in with AMC where it was per movie, and it was actually like around forty five to fifty bucks yeah, per right. per movie. I don't mm-hmm. think it was AMC because the, the oh. theater chains were were boycotting. Uh, yeah, they were against oh. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, but, but it was. But, it, but it was you are right about forty five. You're, you're right about the pricing. It was forty five dollars a month uh, or a movie, a movie, uh, yeah. which then would allow you to watch it with your whole family. Which yeah. Is exactly. 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 Made sense. Right. Yeah, yeah. In in a situation like this, like something like that would make sense. Well, and AMC's got a streaming service available too, so it's kind of like yeah. you guys. The, the infrastructure is there. Just if you want your films to get or your your chain to get money in some way. Well, that's the how problem you do is it. the problem with that is that the 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 theaters themselves mostly make their monies off concessions. Also not true. Not so much off the ticket sales. Very true. Which, very speaking true. of which, um, the next story that we're going to talk about is that AMC uh, is capping ticket sales. Uh, for each show time, about 50%. So yes. they're going to go ahead and only sell 50% of the seats, uh, encourage people to sit uh, at least you know, not next to each other, sporadically throughout well, the theater. And they talked about trying to um, have their have the hand sanitizer stations everywhere, have um, have their staff you know more, more diligent on cleaning. Uh, so do you guys feel like you guys would be okay with, with going to an AMC now during this case? No, absolutely not. I, I think that that you know I went to a Starbucks this weekend, um, and quite clearly, you know, we, everyone's taking a huge precaution, and we should we should also mention that we, you know the U.S. is in a state of pandemic, and so of course there's a huge uh, fear. But I did see a, a, a mother with their child. Uh, at Starbucks, and the child was just coughing up a lung, and you could tell the child had something. And it's like, sure, she might not have, you know, the the COVID nineteen, but like at the very least, um, I think that look at you using the million thank dollar you, word. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> given the opportunity, people who are sick will still go to the movie theaters if given the option. And I think that the responsible thing to do is to, you know, let, let's abide and and say like, let's give it a, a two week break. Let's figure out an alternative way of doing that so that we're not all stuffed into a movie theater. I think that's the the worst thing you can actually do right now. Mike? Yeah, I I agree. I think uh staying out of the public for now and uh avoiding big social gatherings is probably the best idea. Um and yeah, I as much as I love going to the movie theaters, yeah, totally. like now's not the time to <laughs> to to do that and and I guess just keeping it in mind. You Let me know. give you a scenario, though. Sure. Okay. What if it's the last showing of the day, uh huh, and there's no one else in the theater? But how do you know that, Dan? Yeah. Like, I'm, how do you it, know that? You're not the only. Well, see, that's the problem is that that at, and I'm, you, I'm, I'm, I'm not dissing you. I'm not trying you, to. Uh, are, you, yeah. are you the first person in the theater? In no, the no, 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 no. But but, see, but, <laughs> but, but I, I like I like. It feels like I'm playing a role playing game with Dan. Like <laughs> I feel like afterwards, if you give the wrong answer, he's gonna be like, "Damn, you bam. lost." He's gonna be like, "Bam, you're dead." Yeah. <laughs> but no, like, oh. what, what I'm saying is this: like like we all think that as a culture or as an individual, you are smarter than your culture. What I'm saying is, if you think that you're the first one to think of an idea. You're probably going to show up to a huge crowded room because everyone's had that idea. The, the same thing applies to people who want to go to Disneyland during like Wednesdays or Thursdays, right? We think, oh, those are not the, the peak hours, so we'll go during a non peak hour. And everybody you, has the except same Except when you idea. buy your ticket, it's, it's seat. You have to pick your seat, and you can see if there's anyone else in the theater. Yeah. So you know so, for sure if you are the only person because you have to pick your seat <laughs> at that time. But then you don't know no, if somebody has bought something I, after that. I, yeah. You know, I th- why did you, you buy the ticket? Literally, like, Five minutes before the show, and <laughs> you just play twenty minutes of trailers. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying you drive to the movie theater, and if you get to the box office and you see that there are people in the theater, you're just going to drive back home. H- have you guys seen that whole uh, flatten the curve? Yes, that's that's on? what this is all about. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I think well, going to expand on that. Sure, sure. Expanding on that, it's uh, uh, I've 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 seen it a lot with like a uh, Kumail Nanjiani yeah. who's been posting a lot online, yes. and he's he's been a huge advocate of this, which is just convincing people to stay home because yes. if like like you may have a healthy immune system, but y- y- like it doesn't mean that you won't be carrying it and then mm-hmm. accidentally give it to someone that doesn't have. 
that and is has any type of illness and like so going anywhere where like uh, even if a lot where a lot of people have been like it doesn't necessarily have to be at that moment you're there's still potential like it's better right now i think it is best to just kind of play it safe as much yeah. as i love being in theaters i think i think keeping your friends and family and loved ones protected is the most important okay can so. i elaborate a little further on absolutely the, on the, on the go curve? ahead why mike right, mike, so, mike says so beautifully so why the, you the, way, more? the way that the curve works is that currently we're on a rise of people who are getting infected because everyone's going to work and everyone's going to school and all these the and again this is a, the virus itself is a virus that you can't tell whether or not you have it um you do know once you get the the effects and more importantly when you start spreading it to people who are elderly or people who are immunocompromised they tend to those are the the fatalities you're looking at uh people of our age kids younger than us they're all going to survive however our loved ones are the ones who are going to be suffering for that 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 sake so you know when you lowering the curve essentially what you're saying is if you stop going out if you stop working if you stop doing all these things um then you are less likely to contract it pass it and make it worse because we're i mean we're now looking at a potential two week to about a month uh closure here in california because of wanting to flatten that curve and that would have been much more difficult if you look at something what china did china didn't act on this the correct way and so it skyrocketed and that's the reason why they became the epicenter that's why italy became the epicenter of this infectious disease and that's our review of the covid19 <laughs> virus is it is it a dine-in no, it no it's, it's a like... leftover so you do not want any of this you do not want this so at all it means stay home <laughs> it, just know, means like, stay home, guys. Like yeah. it's okay. You know what? You know, listen to our past episodes. If yeah, you we have we have about like over two hundred episodes. <laughs> and, 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 that's it, true. It, but you know what? And, and I just as a social advocate, I want to just say this. I know it's easy for us to say that because you know I think the, the well, with the exception of Mike, uh, we we tend to have a, a really safe career path that we know we're not going <laughs> to lose our jobs, and so we can take two weeks off. But I know there are people who are poor, people who have kids, and there's people stru- in the entertainment industry. Yeah, and people in the entertainment industry. So people are struggling right now but especially if you live in california there are ways uh, of going around and making sure that you have uh, financial support uh, and social support uh, and and even at that like you know uh, food is a huge thing so uh, you know bending that curve is really important for us to all contribute into i get it we're an independent culture but it's time for us to start acting a little more collectively and thinking about our neighbor so be kind to each other don't go to a movie theater that's my opinion don't go to a movie theater yeah. um, watch movies at home Watch movies, uh, Netflix, Amazon, HBO, all the different streaming sources. There's ways around that. And um, Scholastic released a great schedule on what to do with your kids. Try that. It's it, It'll be better than you having to spend two weeks in a hospital. And that would do it for our, our, our review show. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but we have a, we have a com- comment. Uh, Brian Lozano says, hello, hey. everyone. Hey. What's up, Brian? And he says, I'd, I'd go. Nothing's changed. People are still gross. <laughs> well, it, it, so it's your own, I guess. well then yeah then then <laughs> then i'm gonna stay away from you because here's the thing i read this really just amazing- make sure to wash your hands yeah well, everyone wash your hands yeah, well and 20 seconds hot water hot, hot water. water every wash your hands every 20 seconds yes <laughs> no for 20 seconds oh for 20 seconds well seconds. and and here in california they, they just announced that people are 65 and older are not going to be allowed to leave the home they're self-quarantining yeah. uh, oh, which is hilarious because i went to starbucks earlier and there was clearly people who were ignoring it um and then on top of that uh bars and wineries are gonna be closed as well so even if you want to go out, listen, the, if do you want this to go on further, you're going to be the reason for that. Stay home. Don't infect anyone else. Yeah. Wash your hands, wash your face, and brush your teeth. So do, are you upset that AMC is stay, keeping the doors open? Yeah. Because they're yeah. trying to keep the lights on? I, yeah. I, think, a, I think a theater like – uh, theaters should start closing. listen temporarily Bro- closing for now broadway did the right thing they you know hamilton which is like like Actually, killing it, you know for some reason and i don't know why the ticket even went back on for hamilton so that's that's weird yeah don't I, trust that well yeah I, would, I don't know why but you you were able to enter the lottery for the, for two days go figure yeah so i don't know what happened with that but that for some reason that opened again yeah Okay. Which then leads us into our next story, right? Which it would, uh, because it's weird the fact that Hamilton opened up because that show was postponed, but also postponed was a lot of releases, especially from Disney, 
They postponed Mulan, The New Mutants, and they also uh, postponed Antlers, which I didn't realize was a Disney film. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> it, it does not look like... That would be a fun ride in Disneyland. <laughs> it would be. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but on top of that, uh, Fast and Furious has been pushed back a whole year. A whole year. Uh, yeah, we talked about, about James Bond being pushed back to no, November, October, October, November, November. November. You're right. You're right. And, yeah. Um, so all these films started to be pushed back, um, which is understandable. Quiet Place Two. Quiet was Place back. Two was pushed right. back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Love the Birds, Birds, which is kind of, which uh, Kumon and Jad. The, and I love that he came out saying like, "No, this is this is better. This is good." Yeah. So yeah, that's good. Uh, so really, I guess there's no real reason why to go to the theaters because all the movies you want to see are no longer in the theaters. Hey, <laughs> so that problem said, that problem takes care of itself. It's a good point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is why we are streaming movies yeah, we're doing, in theaters yeah. watching them. You're, you're going to end up like sitting by yourself in a theater <laughs> watching nothing, <laughs> watching commercials, getting stuff. infected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. You know, so yeah, it, 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 I don't know. What do you think, Dan? I feel like this makes sense. I think that this is the right way. No, of going. this is this is good. The only thing is, it's like, um, I I understand that uh, um, the Fast and Furious saga got pushed back a whole year. Yeah, I'm just curious to see because there's no release date for the new A Quiet Place Two or The Lovebirds mm-hmm. or um, Mulan. There's no or The Mini Mutants. There's no new release date. Yeah, and I wonder if that's a, to see. If this gets better or gets worse, I think that's exactly what it is. I think yeah. I think just like we were talking about earlier about bending the curve, it's <laughs> it's all about thinking about. All right, so if we say in two weeks this is cleared out, which is unlikely, but if we say in two weeks, and that's kind of what the that's what Disney's doing with with Black Widow, and the crazy they're, is they're all... saying that like in two weeks we should be okay, so we have Black Widow ready, but. If it's not, that's going to get postponed too. Yeah. So that's why they're not setting uh, uh, dates because they they don't want to republish new posters. Like you know, we were about to watch My Spy, and there's there's posters everywhere for that. And th- that 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 movie was pulled right before it was released. We, we were talking about it, and so people now went to the theater with the expectation to watch My Spy, had to go watch Onward, and now got infected. So I don't know about that, but you know what I mean. Like it's like that's. I, kind I of don't what's think going on. Onward is, is is a bad substitute for My Spy. I think Onward is a pretty good movie. Well, oh, no, I. That's not Anyways. the point. Not the point. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, Mulan had their premiere, so it's crazy that Mulan had the premiere this week. And then the film itself got pushed back to yeah. who knows. Yeah. So there are a group of people who have seen the film as it's completed yeah. and who were at the premiere who now – if who know how the film ends and everything. Obviously, we kind of know because of the animated version. Yes. But uh, that's just weird to me that the premiere was happened and now like none of us can see it till sometime – who knows. Oh, but that just that just means that like the, the production crew, the, everything was already in place for it. And you know what? They're trying to save themselves a lot of money. That's really what it, I mean. The production, the entertainment industry is all about money. And if they release right now, I don't know how much money Mulan was made for. It was, it was, it was tracking to make over eighty million, eighty million dollars in the weekend. And but how is, much? How much was it uh, production wise? And so, if it's not going to make its money back on the first week, no, no, yeah, it's, none of these movies were going to make their money back. Yeah, which, which is, uh, you know, to to refer to the next story. None of these movies are going to make their money back. All the tentpole movies are going to lose money. This has been the worst weekend for box office. Dan, you want to talk a little more about that? Yeah. Uh, so Variety came up with an article that that states box office has plunged to the lowest level in over two decades because of the the novel coronavirus pandemic, also known as COVID nineteen. Yeah, COVID. That's what I said. COVID. I heard COVID. No. Corvette. Uh, Corvette. <laughs> Corvette. Corvette nineteen. Yeah. But yeah, it it. Everything, yeah. No one's gonna. No one's watching. So movies. the highest um, number one was uh, was Onward, of course, which pulled only ten point five million dollars. It was a seventy three percent decline from last week's yeah opening. Um, and that's st- stupidly significant. Like, it's that's a lot. Huge. It's yeah. almost a hundred percent. It's not that far from hundred percent of yeah. just dropping out completely. Uh, so it's really like been hard on the entertainment industry. Which I know people, when they think of it, in, in entertainment industry, they think of the actors, directors, mm-hmm. producers. But there's also like, you know, the grips. There's yeah. like yeah. people yeah. who work in the industry, like work behind the scenes as well. They're being um, affected by it as well. Yeah. I got a friend of mine who is, uh, he does like, a, you know, stage production stuff. Like he builds sets and stuff. And yeah, his his work is completely gone. Yep. You know, and. Yeah, it, I've got a few friends who, who whose work has been. 
kind of they've been halted. Yeah, so it's it's going to be an incredible pressure on the government, and you know, again, that's not something we usually talk about, but entertainment industry is all about finances, and if no one's going to go watch a movie, if no one's able to film a movie. You're right. Nobody's able to uh, – production companies have 250 to 500 people on sets. Like that's a lot. You can't do that now. And so people are going to lose their jobs and people – the entertainment industry, we're going to have this gap, I feel like, of of films. Um, and in the same way that I kind of feel like the, the reason why the the reality TV boomed was for the similar reason. So it's 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 horrible. So you, do you feel like it is time for like uh, Netflix and Amazon and Disney Plus to start cranking out their own productions? No, they've stopped. Yeah, everything's halted. Oh, Netflix, everything Amazon, stopped. all those productions, You're Disney right. Plus. You're absolutely right. All of those guys have stopped. What That's I right. think they should be doing is releasing as much films as they can uh, to their streaming sources. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Never mind. Let's let's go ahead and let's move on to some. Uh, why we're here? We're going to actually yes. review some streaming films. Yes, uh, which uh, which is the main reason why we're we're doing a podcast. Since we didn't go out to the movie theaters, we figured, well, let's since we're staying at home, practice what we preach. Let's let's <laughs> review the films that we yeah. can watch at home. Yep. So let's start with the first one. Movie menu. And the first movie we're reviewing will be Tony Boy. <laughs> did you, did you I, I, I love that you forgot. Dramatic. No, I, feel like I you have forgot. it here. I feel like you forgot. No, that was, that was a good dramatic was gonna, pause. Yeah, it was. Uh, but I'm not hosting it. Z's hosting it. So That's Z, you right. take it away. All right. The movie we're reviewing is Honey Boy. Uh, released November 27th, 2019. Also, um, it's Honey Boy. They can be... Stream and I was going to say oh. that. Calm down. I'm hosting. Okay, go on. Uh, <laughs> Honey Boy, uh, released November 27, 2019, available on Amazon Prime. So it is a subscription base, so you do have to pay for the watching this. Uh, directed by Alma Harrell, written by Shia LaBeouf, starring Shia LaBeouf, Lucas Hedge, Noah, and Noah Jupe. All right, here's the plot. A young actor's stormy childhood and early adult years as he struggles to reconcile with his father and deal with his mental health. Depending on your spoiler for review, I would decide this movie is worth dining. I have not watched this movie. This movie is worth dining, but we're not doing dining. Let's this, this do this a different one. Let's yeah, do yeah. stream it yes. or leave it. Stream it or leave it. Yeah. <laughs> isn't, it's isn't it's that, kind of like take it or leave it? Yeah. St- stream it or leave it, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Should we stream How it or should we leave it? stream it or dump it? Just so we dump can play it. on, the, on the, the poop and pee jokes. Oh. Oh, I, I get it. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a... Sorry. Or yeah. diarrhea. <laughs> So, <laughs> so it's a mixture so of both. Yeah. If, if it's yellow, let it mellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is the movie if yellow? It's brown, flush it down. <laughs> yeah. Is it yellow or brown? Or is it mellow <laughs> or is it flushed down? Or should yeah. we just do like endemic pandemic? You know, one of one or the other. <laughs> wow, Christopher says, "Have we sanitized each other yet?" Uh, just that is, that, what happens before the podcast is what happens stays before the, behind. Yeah, stays before the podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right, so <laughs> was it stream it or leave it? <laughs> sure, well, we, yeah, all right, we'll go, we'll go with that. Stream it or leave it. All right, so this is putting on your point of review. I would say it's worth a stream it or a leave it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Um, Not to be confused with a dump it. Yeah, dump. that's what I'm saying, <laughs> dump it or, 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 you know what? Yeah, whatever, it's fine. Uh, all right, rate this film, guys. Uh, again, I have not watched the movie. That we, we're not doing points. We're just choosing whether or not I should stream it. Or not. That's okay. And, and spoiler free. Yeah. Okay. Spoiler free, guy. Go for it. Uh, Mike. I'm going to say stream it. Stream it. Yes. It's kind of hard. This is a 50 50 choice, right? Yeah. Uh, Dan, what about you? Uh, I'm going to say. I'm going to say stream it. You say stream it. You, <laughs> wow. were, you, were, you okay. were hesitant on I, I like that hesitation. No, no, no. My hesitation was to make you think I was going to say leave it. Oh I, I, oh, I didn't believe okay. you at all if you, that's what you're going for. Uh, I, I'm not trying to fool you. I'm, I'm, I'm the host. I'm looking for the audience. I am the host. I am the audience. Dan's, uh. just, Dan's just confusing me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's my job. It's like make a choice, man. <laughs> it's my job. All right. So why should I watch this movie? Why should I spend time logging into Amazon Prime and putting on a Shia LaBeouf movie. Why, why are you lying? Oh, you already even logged Christopher, in. <laughs> Chris says to stream it as I well. don't care. Chris is not here to convince me. You're here to convince me. Why should okay, I watch so this? So this film is written by Shia LaBeouf, okay. right? And it's basically like a bio, biographical a pick of his life. 
of when he was a child and when he was an adult. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it jumps back from Lucas Hedge and Noah Jupe, who play the same character, oh, okay. Otis. Um, Otis? And, yeah, Otis. So it's not, it's not Shia? It's Shia. They just, they just changed the name to Otis, so it's not like Shia okay. is saying Shia all the time because Shia plays his father. There's a young boy's father. Shia. Yes. Shia plays Shia. <laughs> no. Shia's father. Shia's father. Plays the father. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Shia plays Shia's father. Okay. A.K.A. Otis's father. Got it. A.K.A. No, no I'm <laughs> like I said, Dan confuses me all the time. <laughs> all right. Um, and it's a the story itself is um very heartbreaking, mm-hmm. um, but also very real. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed the direction of the film and the style of it. Okay. Um, there were moments where it's like you think uh you're watching like behind the scenes filmmaking going on and then you when like you see it again you're like oh no that wasn't behind the film that was actually real oh my god that was real <laughs> that was, it was done really well which is which is uh what the director's style is known for that whole uh documentary that that whole blur blurring of the lines of documentary and mm. filmmaking so um well, what else has she done uh, I think she. Uh, uh, that's a good question. Um, uh, Alma don't ask Harrell. questions unless. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was hoping. Research. I am so hoping you she, guys did your she, research. <laughs> she did do a. Uh, I think it was it was a Tribeca film. I'm trying to remember right, the without name. the name. It doesn't really. <laughs> I know. Uh, All yeah. right. So she's done a documentary. But eleven eight what? eight sixteen. Uh, yeah, she seems to have done mainly documentary films. Yes. Okay. Which and I, and I think it lends itself nicely to this film. What I don't understand is like like why not just commit all the way uh, uh, writing wise from No, no, uh with uh, Shia LaBeouf just not why not just commit all the way and call the characters Shia, you know? Call the lead character Shia. Yeah, that's a little confusing. You know, so it's kind of it's interesting, but other than that I, I think though it even though, like, literally it's him because at the end of the film, they show pictures of when yeah. Shia was young and his father. And the father looks exactly like Shia yeah, in the yeah. film. Oh, and, okay. and, 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 and in interviews, he does say he's basically playing his father so, yeah. in a lot of television interviews. So. But yeah, I think, I, but, I but I think for his own mental health to separate it from film t- to reality, I think that's why he did the separation. Ah, I see. Because okay. Okay, I, I don't I, think it was. I don't honestly. I don't even think it's for any of us. I think it's just something that he did. That you're he right. Wanted to do for himself. Mm. Okay. You're you're because right. He's yeah. he's Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, and it, oddball. It was it was fantastic. He was do it. Yeah. Well, he, well, he's not. He's not an. All, I mean, that's unfair to say. He's not an oddball. He he. That's is not in, a he, bad thing. He's in fact bipolar. Right. That's that's essentially what his diagnosis is. He's come out and said that. Um, well, and it, and this movie's about. From what I remember hearing about the the interviews was about his. His PTSD, that his, exactly. his trauma yeah. that he had. That was exactly what I was going to mention. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the, the Just saying, like, calling somebody like that an oddball is unfair, you know? Oh, it's Shia. No, I'm I, kidding. I, I, <laughs> uh, but uh, it goes from when he starts rehab and him realizing that he has PTSD uh-huh. and then him going back and forth from memories when he was a child to him being back in rehab and just it going back and forth and seeing where he was to where he is, it's like... You know, it's really well done. Well, and yeah. I, I guess my bigger question is like, did you did you connect with the characters knowing that because we we all have our own opinion about Shia, and I, I know I do. Uh, could you connect to those characters? Absolutely. I feel like, I feel like we, we got to understand him a lot. Yeah, more. I, like, I absolutely, absolutely, and I I with that, it's like I there's a new understanding of of just what was happening like we we all saw in the news like when he was getting arrested yeah, and yeah, and yeah. his like um for for alcohol abuse and for all these different things and and you kind of like you you see the behind the scenes of all that and and why it led to that and and you also see his he- healing process which mm-hmm. i thought was amazing and and i think it is like a good um like it's a good uh film to guide other people that are kind of like suffering through those traumas and maybe using like uh, any type of uh, abuse to try to self-medicate to help them get the help that they need and uh, i i uh, i thought it was very well done right. and it, it was more heartfelt than i had expected and and uh also what i didn't expect was like i i felt a little bit more uh comp- compassion towards the father character than i thought i would oh okay so 
And yeah. it be, because I've heard, I've heard like um, before seeing this film, I have heard people describe uh, Shia LaBeouf's character, or him playing his father, uh, basically as like the villain. But I, I think that's an incorrect description of the father. Who would you compare him to? Uh, like, like what character? Like what other archetype would you compare him to? That's it's tough. Like uh, I'm, I'm thinking, like Nightcrawler. Like no, 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 no. 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 This, Nothing is compared to that. It, I think. The, I think what Mike's trying to say is like it's, he, he. They really. It's not fair to make him the villain because he is human and flawed. Yeah. It's a very complex human character with both like good and bad qualities. sides yeah good and bad qualities and and you see where the father comes from as well and and because you you do get a um bits of of his own uh childhood and his own history and what he had gone through being uh a being a vet of, oh yeah yeah right. being a being a veteran of war so he yeah. has like like ptsd of his own as well and and kind of like um he's kind of he has these good intentions for his son but but they come out in very funky ways and um and it's a part of uh it, actually in asking that question like the of like what he reminds me of i would say like like michael jackson's father okay um okay. uh maybe may, may, maybe not i was like oof that's really may, may, <laughs> maybe 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 not Jesse as jackson no, may, may, jackson. <laughs> maybe maybe not as intense but but kind of like that same like jerome jackson i think uh that same uh uh, uh, style or the, this the same heavy negative energy that could sometimes be there you know gotcha. the same chaos that could sometimes be there like i don't know if you've ever i always loved those vh1 behind the scenes movies oh totally yeah, the, yeah. those like straight to tv ones i remember there was this mike uh michael jackson one or it was like a jackson five one and um i, I can't remember the name but it, it was very well done and and i like like uh and and i felt like it was reminiscent of that to me well i, I have a question because i um sure. so so the, the benefit of of reviewing this movie after the fact after like the year like why wasn't this film nominated for an oscar like that that would be like like my interest like what doesn't work for this film that didn't make it to the accolades of the oscars that's a good question i don't think it was released in very many theaters that that wouldn't matter that wouldn't oh, matter. Um, yeah but uh, like what doesn't work in this movie that you feel like could have impacted from from getting the oscar nom there are strange. There's strange scenes. Honestly, no, honestly, I think there's still like a stigma with Shia LaBeouf. Okay, and like mm, that's a, lot a part of, of it. A lot of people, I'm sure, like that he worked in Hollywood and burned um, a refu- lot of bridges. Yeah, burned yeah, burned a lot of bridges. That they, they refused to see this movie, and a lot of them are probably within the Academy. Just didn't want to see it be nominated. Okay, it did not. I don't think it got any really award love. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, point. I, I've got another streaming question. Uh, sure. My question is, how many times did you look at your phone while watching this movie? That's a good point. That's, that's a, a good very because that's the problem, right? The problem is that when we watch movies at home, you're distracted. So, how many movies? How many times did you watch it? How many times did you get distracted while watching this movie? Or could you say wash dishes or do something else while watching this movie? I, I watched this during the daytime, and I was like super distracted. Oh, okay. I was like, but but I still like. It, it, I was. I still managed to get back into to it. To be though. fair, that's I your watched ADHD. it. No, I, wa- I, well, <laughs> I watched it. I watched it late at night, and uh, I would say I watched it about 10 p.m. Friday night. Yeah, and so I finished around 12, and I think I probably looked at my phone maybe three or four times. Okay, so yeah, it's I, not a whole I, lot. I mean, by no. comparison to <laughs> the, oh, some of the other movies that we're going to review, I, uh, <laughs> I, I was like, I was like a part of like a bunch of like text like group chats and stuff. So I was like getting a bunch of questions and stuff going on. And I was like, ah, uh, okay. I'll respond real quick. Okay. okay. <laughs> and I was like, all right, all right. Where was it at in the movie? All right. So as far as distractibility, you can actually stay focused a little bit. Uh, right. yeah, it, and you know what? I will also say though, um, this goes back to the point of why I feel like though Lucas Hedges was really good in it. Uh, Noah Jupe, I think is probably the real star in this. I don't oh, know if okay. you agree or not. He was fantastic yeah, in this. I, I but like, I, I did think. Uh, I, I think Lucas Hedges did yeah, a good job. Yeah, he was job. fantastic as uh, well. But I think the story that people will be more like heartbroken over, I guess, probably is is the Noah Jupe, is, oh. is the little child version yeah, 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 yeah. story, and it just like things that you see happen to this kid who is famous, by the way. Because when Sarah LaBeouf did Even Stevens, he was like, a, he, got, he was the star of Even Stevens. Oh, he was a huge star. I mean, like one of his first films is one of my... Holes. Like, yeah, Holes is one of my favorite movies. Just because it's so silly. The book is really, really beautiful. And I think that the the, the inter- interpretation of that, so that blasted him on, on the scene and then Transformers came along and... But they also like, I don't know about you, Mike, but you always hear like, 
you know, the the dark Hollywood versions of like child stars and stuff yeah. like that, what yeah. they've gone through. And to like witness it and see stuff that goes on with, with Nora Dupes character is it's it's yeah. yeah. It's, intense. it's intense. It is it is super intense. Okay, yeah. Cool. And it kind of yeah. Let's just say that they don't even live like a home. They live at like a motel. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Well, like there's so much stuff that can happen at a motel. Uh, well, I've got yeah. my my uh, my my verdict on this movie. Um, unless you guys have any final thoughts, um, I would recommend uh, probably uh, either turn off your phone or watch it late at night. <laughs> All right. <laughs> to av- avoid the distractions, I think it'll. But uh, but e- even then, like I, I was a fantastic film. Yeah, um, I think it's worth the watch. Um, uh, it's sad that it wasn't even nominated for anything. I yeah. don't think it got any really accolades or any awards, uh, though it should have, especially with like cinematography and directing. I thought it was great. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, with that being said, I'm going to vote this movie a stream it. Stream it. <laughs> pee <Yeah>. on it. <laughs> <laughs> This movie gets one golden <laughs> one golden shower. <laughs> See, that's the thing about the word stream. It just it, there's there's too much associated with it. Uh, but yes, well, I, we can't I, say Netflix and chill because we're using other Netflix in quarantine. Mm. All right, uh, I'm going to toss the host of duties back <laughs> over to Dan, and then who, we're we'll tossing over to. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know who's going to go to next. So yes, uh, thank you, Z. Thank that's, you. We're going to thank toss you, the host of duties back to me. There we go. Movie menu. And I'm tossing it over to Mike. Just kidding. I'm taking it back from Mike because the second <laughs> film we're reviewing is Spencer Confidential, which you could watch on Netflix. Uh, Spencer Confidential is directed by Peter Berg, written by Sean O'Keefe and Brian Helgeland, based on the novel by Ace Atkins. Here's the plot. When two Boston police officers are murdered, ex-cop Spencer teams up with his no-nonsense roommate, Hawk, to take down criminals, starring Mark Wahlberg, Winston Duke, and Alan Arkin. All right, guys. I have not seen this film, so depending on your spoiler for review, I would just say this movie is worth a stream it or leave it. <laughs> it doesn't toss it in the trash. It doesn't work any better with you saying it. I, th- I thought maybe, like maybe it's just me saying it. No, it doesn't sound any better when you say it. Uh, it's the best we can do. <laughs> We're like last minute. We don't do any research or we don't do any planning. Well, it's, it's true. Uh, so, uh, so spoiler free if you guys go ahead and let me know what you think. Uh, Z, you go first. All right. So this movie is interesting because it's directed by Peter Berg, who has done a lot of like like very propaganda, American flag-waving films. And so this is a departure from what we expect him from doing. So um, Mark Wahlberg is ridiculous in this movie. Winston Duke is ridiculous in this movie. And I would honestly say that if you who are having a very tough time during this epidemic, pandemic, <laughs> um, watch it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, definitely stream it. All right, Mike. Um, I had fun. Yeah, stream it. I would say stream it as well. Yeah. Now, um, I do enjoy the films that Peter Berg directs with Mark Wahlberg, which is usually all his films. Yeah. Um, but I think you've been, you've been films, a really good fan of his. Yeah, the last couple of films, uh, I really did enjoy uh, Peter Berg's. And um, for him to also use Netflix as his studio to launch this film, do you feel like uh, and the departure away from it being the American, all American um, film, uh, do you think Netflix was the right avenue to go with this type of movie? Yeah. Is this the type of movie that you, like, I'll go back to the question that you asked us. How many times were you distracted while watching this film? Do you feel like this movie served itself from being distractionless or were you distracted because of the content of the film? Uh, I, I mean, honestly, of my opinion on this, I would say that this film, uh, I would watch a sequel for it. Um, because it was an enjoyable romp. Uh, I was watching it while washing dishes, so I was just kind of like, eh, I'll just you know plump it on top and wash some dishes while watching the movie. Um, and I honestly, the entire time, I was really highly entertained. Um, the movie moves really fast, and on top of that, there are moments in which it slows down, but they're they're full of comedic beats, which I really enjoyed. Like you would expect to see, like this hardcore. You know, it's Mark Wahlberg, so he's like, like, oh, you really gonna kick me? Oh man, you know, like he's being very whiny, like he usually is. Um, but then it becomes a joke, and I think that's what I liked a lot about it was that it almost felt like to me like uh, he understood what he, what role he plays in films. And he doubled down and became a very comedic version of that. So, like, similar to The Rock. So, I was very engaged. Winston Duke was freaking hilarious in this. Like, I love them a lot more than I, I – I would say that if you liked them in Black Panther, 
he's very oh, similar. And, and, and no, I, he was more. I mean, same actor, but I'm just saying he's more like Umbaku oh. from from, from oh, Black see. Panther, uh, like that very sarcastic, like but but very d- deep and you know, like he looks like he's gonna kick your ass, but he's actually making a joke. So it was just a really fun movie, Mike. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, were, you, I, were you distracted watching this film as well? No, well, I, I actually saw this at a different time. I saw this like at one in the morning, <laughs> and and like I was there's no. No distractions at all if you ever watch movies at that time. So um, I think it's fun. I think the plot line is is like uh, you can kind of see what's coming ahead, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It's kind of like, oh, okay, got it. Like this is what's going to happen. And it happens. And it's like, all right. Well, it it kind of reminds me of of like like Tango and Cash yeah. without without as much like yes good, without a, good comparison w- without thank you without as much goofy back and forth but it's still there is still like goofy back and forth and the whole like there's this whole like uh, play on like though it, it reminded me is like if you got. Um, the Departed and made it a comedy. Yeah, I guess. and not not as heavy as The Departed, but I was just, about to say nowhere cause... near as heavy as yeah, The Departed. Yeah. Um, but I, again, I what I, I enjoyed the most out of this movie was that it almost felt like this very campy, like play on noir. And what I was very happy to discover was this movie is actually based on a, on a, a book series. Uh, so now I'm really, really interested in, in reading. Yeah, them. the book is called Wonderland. Yeah, and That's so right. it, it really does work well. And I honestly. Because Peter Berg did make a contract, I'm hoping they make a sequel. I'm hoping they, in a very similar way that like a like a TV series. I kind of want to see where this character goes, and especially like Winston Duke's. Um, I forget his character's name, but he's they, they're Hawk. Hawk. It's when when Hawk gets a shotgun and he's all like like uh, Mark Wahlberg's like, hey hey, give me give me the shotgun. It's like that's for me, and and Hawk's like, a shotgun was made for a guy with a name by the name Hawk. Not Spencer. Spencer's the guy who does your taxes, and it's like this really funny, like back and forth that works really. Wait, was well. there like a narrator, narrator type of thing? Or? There was no narration. No no, 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 no. And I think that's what makes this movie even better is that there's no narration. You don't know what you're watching. All you know is that the movie begins with a shot of um. Oh shoot, what's his name? Uh, uh, uh Post Malone. Post Malone. That's, for that's whatever the... fucking reason he's there. That's right. Uh, he's in this. <laughs> There, there, there's a lot of. Like, I was about to imagine. But I think this is like Post Malone's false first film that he's done. You know what? Own. And he does fine. And I think yeah. that that it's 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 a it's a movie you would want to watch at home, not in a theater. And I think that's what makes this movie. That you know, much enjoyable. That, that's a good point. If if this was released in theaters, it would have been a takeout. For Agreed. Me. Yeah. 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 Which is perfect because you're already at home. There you exactly. go. Exactly. <laughs> there we go. I wish I would have reversed it and saw Honey Boy at one in the morning and this one like getting distracted a bunch of times. <laughs> so yeah. uh, you could still watch Honey Boy again. That's true. I already saw it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I have a one move one watch time only policy. No. Wow. <laughs> well that's stupid. I'm, ju- of I'm, you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um now this is categorized as an action comedy film. Yeah. Yeah. How is the action in this movie? It's it's perfect. And how's the comedy? Uh, it, it, both both of them are hit and miss for me, but more. Uh, I mean, it's it's still fun. Yeah, yeah. I, w- I would say that the the action set pieces feel set up a little too neatly, uh, but in, in that like like you know they're about to fight. And then all of a sudden they fight, and you're like, "All right, cool." And, and it reminded me a little bit of Shaw, Shaw and Co- Hobbs from the the Fast and Furious. That's, presents. A, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Exce- except funnier because it reminded me the fight scenes reminded me a little but, more. You know Jack- they were a little more Jackie Chan. The funny thing you mentioned that because that's also streaming right now on HBO. It just came out this past. Well, Saturday. there you go. But no, what I was saying was that it remind the fight scenes, the fight choreography reminds me a little bit of like Jackie Chan's movies, where there are like these the this humor going on with the fighting style. And that's that's the part where I was like, yeah, it's kind of hit or miss, but it's really enjoyable because you know Mark Wahlberg, who's like supposed to be this really tough dude, can't really fight that well, and that's that makes for the comedy to work. Or all of a sudden, there's like a, a dog that pops out of nowhere and bites him, and you're like, that that is ridiculous, but really fun to watch. Yeah, it, it gets all like Ferris Bueller for a moment. It <laughs> does, <laughs> but it's you know, uh, well, if you if you don't take the film seriously, I think you could enjoy it for what it is. Well, Peter Berg is not known for his for his comedy. You know he's he's on Lone Survivor, Deep Yeah, no, Deep Water he's Horizon, Patriot State, a lot of dramatic stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't say this is like like laugh out loud hilarious or anything. But is that? But is it is it better than Michael Bay's comedy? Yes, 
Yeah. Better timed, less sexism, less uh, yeah. uh, pedophilia. Yeah, I like how Mike's it. still struggling. <laughs> Mike, yeah, yeah. Mike, be, yeah, be you, honest. You, you know, you're right. You're, you're right. Uh, like for this type of film, like less explo- uh, more explosions would have probably hurt it. Yeah. You know, I think, I think the, I think the gold in this film. I think Z's right with like the back and forth beat. You know, it reminded me of. Uh, uh shoot uh but oh, can i can i give you yeah, a very yeah, yeah. old reference sure go ahead this reminded me of pi wachowski which is like a really old 80s film um if you have seen it you know what i'm talking about it's ridiculous it's like this this like very clearly 80s woman uh being a detective and it's silly and it's but it's playing on the tropes Say of it again vi wachowski vi yeah or pi sorry pi wachowski yeah, yeah um, and it's just it's, it's just really like out of like fish out of water detective story. It reminds me of that. It's just like, really really silly, and it, it's it's fun to see like like Mark Mark Wahlberg's character has this like like strong uh, moral center, and it, and it's fun to see him like like uh, like Batman. Geek. Oh my goodness! Isn't that yeah, is a great yeah. yes? They they do make yes. mention of that. Yeah, yeah, and they they, they like it. The, at one point, there becomes like a self parody within it, which it, which I thought was funny. Uh, like they they acknowledge that and they kind of work with it, and it's it's very it was very fun. And uh, yeah, I, I think that there are enough like fun moments in here where like if. You have nothing to watch. I think this this would be. Oh <laughs> wow, nothing! <laughs> I think that's unfair to say. I think this is just a very enjoyable movie. Um, uh, we have a comment. Real quick, go for it. Heather McLean. Hey, hey Heather. Heather. Hi, Heather. Says I love you guys. Well, we love you too. Stay safe Ooh. out there. Yeah. Sorry, it's Vi Wachowski. <laughs> I, was, I was right with Vi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and how's the chemistry uh, comedy chops between Winston Duke and Mark Wahlberg? Can you see them doing a sequel? Like you said, you want to see them uh, or doing other films together. Did they have like, are they like Danny Glover and Mel Gibson on screen? No. But I would, I would say, I would say no. I would say not, not like that because that, that, that requires you to have a, the, the, was it the, the comedy actor with the straight actor? This isn't that at all. It's they're They're both really fun to watch bouncing off each other. Mark Wahlberg, who, who is significantly smaller than he is, uh, than, than, than Winston Duke. Um, it's it's just funny watching him try Don't to tell ma- Mark Wahlberg. That. I, I know, but you can <laughs> really tell there's like an ego thing happening while the movie's going on. But that's what makes it funny to watch. Yeah. Mike, yeah. Uh- I would well. I don't. Yeah, I don't think there's as much chemistry as like uh, as Lethal Weapon. I was gonna say Loaded Weapon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my one of my my final question is gonna be. Uh, so why is it called Spencer Confidential, and what is really the plot about? <laughs> Uh, so it's Spencer Confidential because again, it's a play on the the whole noir, right? L.A. City Confidential, like it's it's a play on that noir confidentiality thing. If people were asking him, like, "Are you a PI now?" Because you know you can't be one. Um, so it it's it's just that play on like he's a detective, but he's not really a detective. Um, the plot is that Mark Wahlberg's character was investigating. Uh, uh, he's got this, as Mike was saying, this very moral. Um, you know, justice uh, thing going on where like if he sees somebody who's being harmed and, and no one's paying attention to it, he goes and he, he intervenes. He's a cop. And so when he's doing that as a cop, it makes sense. But what he finds out is that there's like this corrupt police thing going on. And so he starts investigating his police chief. And when he finds out that his police chief was beating his wife, he he beats him nearly to death. Um, and then gets sent to jail. So he's in jail for five years, and you see him coming out. That's the setup of the story. Yeah, yeah. That's in the very beginning. Very beginning of yeah, the story. First, first five minutes. Wow, and spoiler. So no, 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 Z, no, no. Z, Z, Z hasn't kidding, spoiled it. I haven't spoiled anything. What happens in the movie is that, that another cop of his, another friend of his, gets killed, and his wife is like, no, this is this is not who he was, and he sees that, and that moral anger comes out, and he's like, I have to intervene. I have to figure out what happened so to So he my has friend. to avenge his friend? Yeah, it's, <laughs> so it's Batman and the Avengers. They, like, again, <laughs> again, there yeah. there is a humoristic thing going on there, and it definitely it's it's on the surface. They make fun of it, and that's that's why you're watching it because it's like, and he's not a good detective. He's not. He, he never made a detective. He was just a you know he was a blue shield. He would never actually got to that, and it's just really funny watching him trying to figure out like who done it, who was the person who killed his friend. All right, any final thoughts before I get married? That's it. Uh, one more thing. 
Go for Let me it. See, uh, do, you, do you need me I, to do this stall? I, I, no, no, no. I had, I had. I have to mention. I, I really enjoyed Alan Arkin's yes, character. Agreed. It was fantastic. It's he played like, Alan Arkin, <laughs> yeah, but which was fantastic. Which was perfect for this. I think it and, was like. And who is he in the film? I, honestly, I don't know. I, we don't know. I think he, it's <laughs> he's a like landlord. He, no, he's, he's, he's like a, a, he's Alfred. He, he he's like a he's like a, a father a father figure. But I, I don't remember them ever like ex, like saying the relationship. It's just like this old grouchy father guy yeah, who's around. So he is like Alfred. He, he is. He, yes, he, yes. he he is. He is. He like ex, <laughs> except Mark Wahlberg is not like a, a billionaire. But no. it's but it's it's funny and I I like I actually uh, I I really enjoyed Alan Arkin in this like like if they're like it's he, he, it's just a great character on its own yeah. it's almost like you, like you know what's gonna happen to this character and you enjoy it because he's such a fun guy to watch yeah 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 all right i think i've heard enough and i will go with stream it yay and, uh, now Woo. i want to see the nerdy stuff that is the undertones of batman and avengers yes you, you'll <laughs> really you it's really stupid and fun to watch all right, uh, thank you so much. Let's go on to the next movie review. Movie menu. And now our final review. Uh, I'm gonna toss those news over to Mike. Yeah. Stan. Finally. No, <laughs> so the movie we're reviewing is Lost Girls, directed by Liz Garbus, written by Michael Werwe, and based on the book by Robert Coker. If I mispronounce the name, please correct me. Uh, starring Amy Ryan, Thomas and McKenzie, and Gabriel Byrne. Here's the plot. When Murray Gilbert's daughter disappears, police in action drives her her own investigation into the gated Long Island community where Shannon was last seen. Her search brings attention to over a dozen murdered sex workers. Now, depending on your spoiler-free review, I will decide if this is a stream it or leave it. <laughs> or, or uh, it sounds fine to me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Stream it or peem it. <laughs> wow. Stream it or there, there has to be a rhyme in there somewhere. We'll, we'll, we'll come up with it by the end. Okay. Okay. Um. So, uh, stream it or dream it. No. <laughs> Uh, Dan, how do you rate this movie? <laughs> uh, stream it, stream it. Yeah. All right, that, that was a very, very serious like. It's, 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 it's a, it's a very, it's a heavy movie. Heavy movie, okay. And okay. it's not for the faint of heart, and it's, oh. it's inspired by true events. Yeah, it is. And it makes me want to watch especially the ending. Um, mm. uh, it's okay to uh, carry tissues with you if you want. Wow. Okay. okay. Z. Um, it, there's no middle ground here, so this sucks because I'm just going to say that this is a leave it. Is that what we we, we said? Uh, wow. Um, okay. I love watching true crime stuff. I really do. Um, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of of watching true crime and, and hearing the stories. One of my favorite uh, TV shows, and it's hard to say, uh, is unbelievable. And and it's it watch that one. I think that's a brilliant job of showing you from the victim side of of, of sexual trauma. Um, but this movie for my, for my, my own viewing, I was not engaged. I honestly could not get past some of the accents in this movie. There were some actors who were just weaker than others. And I think that that's what really stuck out for me. And I could not stay focused on this movie. And again, I was watching it at home and I just, I couldn't stop looking at my phone. I was just bored the entire time. Got you. What about you, Dan? Um, I was able to. Well, I was able to watch this. I didn't watch this by myself. What time did you? This. Oh, you watch it with your mom? Yeah, I watched it with my mom. Okay. And um, so, is it is it a movie that you can watch with your mom? And it, I mean, my mom likes weird things. My mom <laughs> loved this movie. She um, she told me afterwards, but I just so yeah. My mom was down to watch whatever. She enjoyed <laughs> it, but the fact that it's really um, uh, inspired by true events, mm-hmm. I really think it deserves to be watched, uh, especially um. The whole reason why this whole film it was based on a novel. Obviously, someone did the research. Yeah. Um, now this the woman, um, the mom, um, Marty Gilbert. Uh, she is incredible. Uh, it's unfortunate what's what's happened. I'm not. I won't spoil anything. But it's it's such a. I, th- I think Amy Ryan did a great job, and I really really enjoyed her performance in this film. Yeah. Um, I also think. Um, uh, Gabriel Byrne was really great. Um, this I felt like the performances were were more realistic. I guess I can see like we 
Were you thinking like the kids weren't great? Or? Yeah, yeah. It was the kids that really oh, okay. for me were which, just a huge which I, I I got because there was like no emotions. Yeah, uh, it was. All? It was. Some, I mean, okay. So one of okay. So but, one of the, the, the we can we can go into like the acting. So one of the one of the the actors, uh, Una Lawrence, is playing Sarah Gilbert, and now she has her own uh, history in in the whole story. And again, we don't want to spoil it for anybody, but she does have. Um, I would just say emotional disturbance. We'll, we'll lean on that. Um, so she is playing a very flat character, and 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 researching thereafter, I was like, oh, that's why she did it that way. But it's the other daughter, uh, Sherry Gilbert, played by uh, Thomas Thomasine McKenzie, who came out in Jojo Rabbit. Oh, um, she is horrible in this. Really? I was she's not very emotionless as well. I I thought I don't that, think I don't think she's horrible. Well, no, but but I'm saying like Amy is bringing Amy Ryan is bringing a hell of a game. And, and and then all of a sudden she is like flat in everything that she's doing, and it almost to me felt like uh, it almost felt like uh, McKenzie me, wasn't acting with Amy. It just felt like it wasn't. Ma- you, know, you know what I mean? Like for it just, me, it was angsty teen, like like um, trying to like piss her mom off every time or whatever. But oh, it, okay. but it didn't work, and I think that's for me. And then and then on top of that, Mc, now Mackenzie is New Zealand. She's from New Zealand. And her accent was, I think she was trying to go for Jersey, but it kept on leaning on like this. Uh, like It yeah, just it takes place in Long Island. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, but but, but the accents are so odd. It's her accent, especially. You have the mom character and you have her character and the accents are nowhere near each other. And again, I feel like they were not acting in the same room. And I think that's what really disconnected me from this movie every single time. Gotcha. Uh, I don't know, I and mean, that core relationship was the foundation of this movie because I see. no, no, the the main of this story is the mystery. Oh, it's, it's a mystery film. Do of, you feel like it was the mystery? Yes, I feel like it was yes, the emotional no. emotional I mean, distress of the mother. Well, that yes, was where the that, story was at. That's what that's the heart of the film is uh, because is, they don't even lean on discovering who the Long Island serial killer is. They don't even give a shit about that. They care more about the relationship and the. Well, family. I don't want to say we can't talk about why they don't go into that because. I'll be worrying the film. Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> so, so there's a reason why they don't go into the Long Island serial killer. Uh, but the fact that there is one and they go over the bodies that were found because of – and you see this in the trailer. The mom talks about how like the bodies were found because a police officer let their dog out and had just wow. so, to take a shit. Yep. Oh, and yep, it just so see. happened that the dog found the, the bodies. Wow. The, peop- the cops were not looking for them. The cops were like – the fact that this is all real, yeah, yeah, that's well, scary. And, 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 it's, it's and modern very, too, right? Yeah, that's the the scary part. And it's it's um, yeah, it's not like it happened like twenty five years ago. This happened like like ten like ten, less than ten, less than yeah. ten years wow. ago. Yeah. Yeah, and it's 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 a real. I mean, it, like all true, you know, uh, true crime really kind of like leans on. Um, yeah, I agree. Like, it's really heartfelt because, like, yeah, these women were sex workers, and because they were sex workers, yeah, one, one of the they things, were called like prostitutes. They were on called the news pr- and, yeah. and all that stuff. It's it's heartbreaking, and it's kind of it is hard to watch. But I really feel like this movie, um, is mainly for Amy Ryan's performance because she is incredible as the mom, and she is like no fucks given, um, in your face. Uh, like the other moms come together and she's like the leader of the group mm-hmm. and she just does such a great job minus the daughters, yeah, yeah. Uh, which I feel like are forgivable. Uh, the story mm-hmm. around Amy Ryan is, and, and her family and this mystery and the cops involved are, are, are worth watching on Netflix. Yeah. And this is such a Netflix movie. It's, oh, okay. It's, it's, it is. It is. It feels I agree. like such a I Netflix agree. movie so, that belongs to Netflix oh, okay. that, that you could see it. Um, that it makes sense that it's on Netflix because okay. and, and and I would say I would I would uh, add to what you're just saying because Netflix tends to have a lot of true crime in documentaries or series and I agree this movie fits within that 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 genre that Netflix has gotten really good at for example oh shoot was it what's that the, 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 the murder no the, the serial killer ones that the, shockingly the FBI evil. oh. Oh, that one too. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right about Shockingly Evil and, and Disturbing. Oh, uh, Mindhunter? Mindhunter, yeah. Oh. So it, it definitely fits, and I think Netflix has found its niche. I just feel like this one was a weaker one. And I, and then not, I don't know, I don't even know what to fix in this. I think I would have rather have watched a documentary yeah, about uh, the Lost Girls versus this. Got you. I was just about to ask that. Yeah, I, w- I would rather know the true story. And it, when I started digging a little deeper, the, I was like, whoa, this is really the, fucked up. The sad part is it's it would be hard to do a documentary on this because a lot of it was like hush, hush or yeah. in the cover because a lot of the girls that were murdered were, were sex, sex workers. workers. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, you know, some of their clients, John's, who John's. knows? Yeah, they call oh. them Johns. Some of their Johns are within the city. Like, who knows who 
So people wouldn't want to talk. You know, it's it's just that would be well, really hard but but it do. would be a. I mean, you would. I, very, I'm not. I'm not telling be, somebody it, how to make a movie, but I'm saying like very, that, it would be very gripping. Yeah, and suspenseful. Well, and I mean, like it would be a retroactive uh, uh, story, right? Like it's kind of like like a lot of the serial killer stories are all based around sex workers because they're the they're the most vulnerable parts of our society because they get taken advantage by men and they're the ones who nobody cares about. Um, and so I think that this movie really does a good job of showcasing like how dangerous of a work a lifestyle it is. Uh, but I think that I've seen, and I want to think about other ones that I've seen where sex workers are really like like the the, the victims and nobody cares about. And I mean, I'm thinking of like I I just can't really currently think of them. But there are plenty of other films that focus on this. And yeah, I agree. It's horrifying and terrible. And the victims and their families. Those are the ones we need to watch out for, but I would have preferred watching a documentary. Gotcha. Okay. Is there a documentary you would recommend that comes to mind, Z? Um, not currently, but I would say if you want to watch one on victims' rights, watch Unbelievable. It's really fascinating, and and it will have you screaming the word like unbelievable by the end of it. Got you. If um if this was in the theaters, I'm assuming Z, you would have given this a leftover. It would have been no. It would have been a takeout. Takeout. Okay. It would have been a takeout. It Interesting. Would have been a, yeah. It would have I think been. this movie was meant for home though. Yeah. This okay. is, the subject matter is so heavy. I don't see people flocking to the theaters to go see it. Hmm. Um, I mean, so this would be shown in like an art house theater, maybe? Right, if that. It would be like, a super independent, if that. Maybe at a Lemley or, or maybe our Alamo Draft House. W- w- would not, this? Not, 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 AMC, currently. Not, <laughs> not currently. Not currently. <laughs> what would not, <laughs> not AMC, not Regal, not, what, not any of the, not Cinemark. Would this have been a dine-in for you if you would have saw it in theaters, Dan? I don't know. Um, it's 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 a very heavy subject. Yeah, but is, I, yeah. I do, I think it's worth watching, though. Yeah, regardless. Right, regardless. I, I see. Okay, that's interesting. So that's interesting if uh, Z would call it a takeout if it was in theaters, but mm-hmm. uh, uh, um, a not a stream it, though. That's interesting. Yeah. Did yeah. you say that? It, it's a change in dynamics, right? Like okay. if, if given the choice and watching it at home, then it really does change the way you watch a film. And, I, and, I, and, and obviously that's why going to a movie theater is far better of an experience because it forces you to put your phone away. Um, but okay. I think I think when watching this movie singly as a uh, you know uh, as a as a left as a uh, takeout, that's what really got in the way for me is that I just was I, c- I was couldn't engage. I couldn't engage with the character because they kept disconnecting me because of the daughters. Gotcha. Okay. Well, is there anything else you guys want to talk about about this film? Um, I think th- I think the direction was 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 well done. Um, Liz Garbus. Yeah. Um, and I I feel like I I really enjoyed it. I think Amy Ryan is is a standout. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what Liz Garbin does next. I that's that's really what it comes to Garbus does next. I'm really really fascinating. I think it was a good start for her to to make this film, but I want to see more. Okay. All right. So you so for you Z, I'm I'm just interested cuz I I know you're kind of like conflicted in the uh, about this film, especially, but for you, I know it's especially the acting. Like that's the biggest thing that stood out to it me. It is, right? and I'm now looking through her catalog, and I'm seeing that she's done mainly documentaries, and that kind of makes a little bit sense to me. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, like I wanted to see a documentary of this versus I, the I actual see. film. Yeah, I, I understand. I you understand. know, the way it's kind of filmed, though, is it is not documentary style, but kind of is in the sense. Yeah, okay. especially the the ending when you see like the live. You know, like the the You're daughter ruining the, it. No, I'm yeah, just kidding. Yeah. Well, you know, every everything that they, they would show like a documentary. I'm style just kidding. Again, yeah, yeah, I got like, you. Like you could see, like the, the very the documentary. Style. I see. I got you. Okay, I, I I think I've heard enough. I don't know if you guys want to. That's it. That's up to you. I guess. I guess I've heard enough, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one a stream it. Ooh! All right. Screw you, Mike. No, uh, specific, specifically, uh, like what got me was uh, um, Dan talking about Amy Ryan uh, as far as her acting. She's great. She's absolutely fan- fantastic. In it. Which, which, which seems like a unanimous thing, and I know she's the lead in this. And yeah, and you might remember from Late Night, she played like the the head boss. That's right of the studio of the of the, not the studio. What is the channel network? Network. Network. Yeah. Got and, you. Um, uh, she was also in uh, Birdman. She played like uh, the other. One of the females. She played the wife. She's also in The Office. Got gotcha. you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we say stream it. I will go ahead and hand the hosting duties back over to Dan. 
Thank you, Mike. So again, we reviewed three movies today. Oh boy, uh, Honey Boy, Spencer Confidential, and Lost Girls. But you know what? That's not all. Because <laughs> uh, we well, first of all, we we said stream it to all of them. So go stream them. But we also before we sign off, um, which this will be our last episode for quite some time. Yeah, uh, we are going to go ahead and and follow suits and. Uh, self quarantine, yeah. self quarantine, yeah. Postpone any future podcasting for a while, while everything outside in the world gets um, less messy. Yeah, let's practice what we preach. Let's bend that curve and make sure that we do not infect other people. And uh, so we're gonna recommend some things that we've been watching. That yes, we want to share with you. Um, do we want to do one, 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 or do we want to just give our list at the same time? Just, uh, just yeah, all at the same. We just talk all at the same time. There we go. No, like do I do I do my three and then do you three and then Mike your three or two? Yeah. Let's just one, talk about one, it. One. Let's, let's, let's just start with one and let's go with it. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, I want to recommend Hentified. Hentified. Uh, I love that you called it Hentified. I've been calling it that, and I was wondering whether or not I was saying the right way. You, you are. The okay. Right, right, right. So Hentified is a Netflix TV series. So yes. you can stream that on Netflix. Um, and it's about Highland Park? No, it's about Boyle Heights. Boyle Heights. Oh, gotcha. Um, and it's, uh, it's created by Marvin Lemus and Linda Yvette Chavez. Shout out. And uh, it follows a uh, family, uh, three Mexican cousins, and they struggle to chase the American dream. It's a beautiful show. It's 10 episodes um, on Netflix. I believe it's 10 episodes. Shoot. Yeah, I think you're right. That. Yeah, 10 episodes. And um, very amazing film. And, and, I mean, show. And uh, definitely recommend watching it. It's uh, created for Latinx community. Uh, but anyone can enjoy it. Yeah, I've been watching this with my wife, and you know she's Caucasian, and so uh, <laughs> it's been very fun watching it with her because I've been able to like explain to her more culturally, like what they're saying and and how they're saying. And I think that if you grew up around Hispanics, then you get a lot of the language. Um, but if you don't, then you'll have a difficulty understanding it. But honestly, down to down to its core, it's about family, uh, and I think that you can connect with that. Yeah, and that's universal. Cool. All right. Um, Anyone else want to Yeah, ask? I'll jump in next. Uh, sure. uh, for me, uh, probably the best TV series I watched in 2019 was Watchmen. Yeah, I have not. Agree. If you have not watched Watchmen, then make yourself uh, sit down in front of the TV. Now, if you've watched a Zack Snyder uh, version of the, the movie. Ignore. Uh, no, I mean, you can choose to pick what is needed. But, yeah, it's not based off of the movie. It's a sequel to the comic book. And Graphic novel. Sure. And what works the best about the film, uh, about the TV series, is that it really does have a beginning and an end and everything in between eventually makes sense, and you enjoy the process of learning what's happening. It's amazing. It's, I love it. Regina King is uh, incredible yeah. in this show. It's brilliant writing. Damon Lindelof, who wrote The Hunt, which we were supposed to review this weekend, wrote that one, uh, wrote the TV series. Uh, Regina King is fabulous. Yaya it, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, so amazing. Is, is probably like, it, it, like, I think he went from becoming like a, like, oh, that guy from, you know, Aquaman to that guy from Watchmen. Yeah. Like, he was yeah. so good. Jeremy Irons is incredible. Jeremy Irons. I mean, everybody. Tim Blake Nelson. Oh, my God. Looking glasses. Like, <laughs> Yeah, so badass. Yeah, everything about the series, and even even to the the most nuanced of weirdest characters like Lube Man, <laughs> uh, is amazing. And Mike, if you haven't, I haven't watch it. It's I, so I much fun. Yeah, it's, it's, it does oh, sound like, a and it's show. Trent Reznor who does the soundtrack. Trent Reznor uh, and, yeah, and, and Atticus, Atticus Ross. Ross. That's all um, you got to say. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. The music is incredible. They released four albums just for the TV series because they were so. When when they heard about when Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross heard about it, they were like, "No, no, no! You're going to hire us. Here's the music you want to compose the whole series to." That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's great. So uh, good, Mike. Yeah. So, uh, would you guys like? Okay, just uh, give us one. Give us one. Sure. Well, I'll, you know what? I'm going to give you a whole like. Uh, just give us one. It's, give us one. It's a, it's a quadrilogy. <laughs> okay. So you can you can watch the whole Ip Man series. So um, you can now watch Ip. Ip Man 4 on uh, which uh, the main star of Ip Man is uh, Donnie Yen. Okay. And uh, I think this the whole sincere the, the whole series is fantastic so I definitely recommend it. So um you can watch if four I'm movies 
yeah, you could watch all four of them. I believe one through three you can watch on Netflix now. Um, the fourth, I, I know, it it, just was released, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. And it's a it's a fantastic series. Um, it's a nice mixture of martial arts. There is like humor in it as well. I think in part four they start to like, um, like it be the, in moments there's like parodies of a parody of like seventies martial arts films, but it's it's done in a very fun way. Okay. Uh, I I enjoyed this whole series very much and. And I thought it was a perfect close to this um, to the series, so I definitely recommend that. Cool, awesome. Uh, my next recommendation is the TV show on my block. I know we're moving many podcasts, but we're talking about long form shows that you can watch while in the quarantine, and and more importantly, long form shows that are reminiscent yeah, we, to films. I, I think TV has come a long way. They are, and um, also stuff that we enjoy. Uh, so I re- highly recommend on my block season three just dropped on March sixteenth. And uh, this show is about uh, high school students um, uh, who are trying to screw up on their block and like shit happens. And it's so good. It's so good. Uh, it's a rough inner city Los Angeles neighborhood. Four teens find their lifelong friendships tested as they begin high school. And season three is great. And especially the last episode, get ready. You will be crushed. It's oh, so, okay. good. Right, cool. so good. So good. Uh, Z? Yeah, so I'm actually, go- I had a list that I showed you guys, but I'm actually going to, I'm going to, I'm going to shift a little bit. Cause what? I, yeah, because I completely forgot about The Expanse, which is available on Amazon Prime. Okay. Um, it was a TV series that was canceled in 2018 and the fans exploded and they forced Amazon to buy it because they knew that Jeff, uh, Jeff um, Bezos uh, was a, a huge, fan? huge fan of the books, and to the point where he forced a deal to go through so he can announce it in front of a whole bunch of NASA people. And it is probably if you watch The Expanse, it'll ruin Star Wars because it's far more realistic. It's far more. It's more far more compelling as far as like uh, character connections, um, and you really get to see really fun characters that you wouldn't otherwise expect to love like they have a character avisarala who is um who's hindu and she is the leader of like earth and it's like this amazing story and she's always dressed beautifully and it's a it's a tv show that that doesn't uh that that doesn't a a sci-fi show doesn't depict uh, religion as terrible but it's just part of the human experience like for example one of the ships is a mormon ship and it's like it's really just fun to watch mormons in space um but it's actually a whodunit it's it's the the, the the season one begins with who killed this girl or where does where is this girl and you've traveled throughout the entire universe and it's set at a time in which mars who's which has been colonized earth and then the outer belt are at the brink of a civil war, and it's a really cool series. Watch it; it's a lot of fun, guaranteed. Cool, All right. Mike. Uh, the next uh, thing I'm going to recommend hasn't come out yet, but I'm excited for it when it does. It's going to be coming out next month. Uh, if you're a fan of Spike Jones, who's directed a lot of music <sighs> videos, as you guys know, and if you're a fan of Beastie Boys, ah, uh, yeah, I saw that. You, there's a Beastie Boys documentary coming out next month, directed by Spike Jones. So I'm I'm very much looking forward to that. Nice, nice. So nice. it's super exciting. I believe it's going to be on Apple TV. Yes. What's what's the name of the documentary? Do you? Know? Um, I I don't know. It's just I just see a Beastie Boys story. Yeah, there's no, yeah Beastie Boys story. I think that's what it's called. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, and where where would it be Apple Apple, uh, oh, Apple TV? Sorry. Yeah, Apple TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, 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 who's, and who's directing it? <laughs> Spike Jones. And what is it about? It's about the VC boys. <laughs> who's the VC? What's the business? I, I, I forgot. Uh, um, I, I, that's awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and and uh, and also just throwing it back in there. Watch It Men again. <laughs> well, I'm you telling did, you, the series is fantastic. There are four movies in the series. You could just wrecked, you could have just wrecked all of them. I hope you realize. Yeah. You <laughs> it Fan- Man One, It Man Two, It Man Three. Yeah, exactly. And then as a bonus, It Man Four. Exactly. I'm t- it's <laughs> like there hasn't been a more satisfying martial arts film since the It Man series for okay. me. So. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Dan. No, 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 that's just that's a sincere awesome. I'm glad you found some comfort in that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to sound like an asshole. But it's hard, <laughs> but it's hard to do that. I, like, uh, I, I, like, I like how you acknowledge that you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't hear myself with these headphones. So. <laughs> but my choice. <laughs> 
the one thing I want to recommend is you could uh, stream this on Hulu, but it's also based on a movie, and the movie itself is great. It is. Uh, but the TV show is so fucking good. Is it? Is it? It's so fucking good. All right. I think they even sure? improved on it. All right, all right. Hey. It's High Fidelity on Hulu. Uh, um, who stars in this, though? Zoe Kravitz. Oh, okay. Who is fucking amazing in this show. So she's playing the John Cusack? She's playing Cusack? John Cusack role. <laughs> okay. I have as seen this Rob, trailer. Okay. And um, they take it as Robin. Okay. So they put that spin. So it's a, ge- it's a gender Rob, swap. It's a gender swap. Right. Okay. And the cast is so good. But not only that, the music is incredible. And it basically, it's about like a record store owner who who loves music and creates top five lists. Just wonders why is her love life shit. Yeah. Uh, she so she goes back and just and discovers the which is basically like the film uh the top five break heartbreaks of her life yeah um which they cover that within the first three or four episodes and then it expands huh. on it even further now this okay. is based on a novel um so I, i'm assuming that the novel covers more than the movie did itself yeah because there's a lot more stuff but they do some really cool stuff with like uh, narrating because you know in John Cusack and yeah, he yeah. he broke the fourth wall and spoke to the camera. Zoe Kravitz is the same thing, but she's not the only one. It's so fucking cool okay, the way they okay. do it. All right, right. I highly recommend it. Oh man! And the whole time you're going to be yelling at the TV, being "What the fuck are you thinking?" But in the best possible way. Have you watched Fleabag yet? Not yet. Okay. Okay. It sounds like Fleabag. Yeah, but it's so good. It's highly recommended. And I hope they have a season two because the way they ended season one is so good that I want them to have a six, season two. Okay, cool. So go watch right. it. Hulu. We should really High do fidelity. Hulu many okay. TV shows while we're on break. We should. Um, cool. I will definitely I have to. Ah, man, I have to watch that. That sounds it's really good. good. Yeah. You're okay. going to thank me, especially the music. The music is incredible. Right. Okay. I've downloaded so many songs because of this show what okay. uh what what john what where do they go for the music everywhere classic rock okay. uh okay. hip-hop um underground they, they just go everywhere okay all right all right right on right on. Um, um z yeah my my final recommendation before we go on break is westworld um it is a tv series that was mired by a whole bunch of production issues um you know to like the lead dropping out to like the writing not being completely coherent um it is written by lisa joy and jonathan nolan of the batman begins uh, uh trilogy uh he is actually christopher nolan's brother uh for whatever reason he's american and and chris is uh british, british go figure yeah. um but it, this is a series that really if you're a fan of isaac asimov which i know which the new season starts tonight yeah well, well get, let me get to it but i'm saying like i know that a lot of people don't know who isaac asimov is and you should know who he is and that makes me a little bit of an elitist dick but it does like take, Mike said, at least you're aware of it at least i'm aware <laughs> of it but it really yeah. <laughs> does work on this concept of who are we as humans if we treat others worse than us um it and it does it using robotics american well if you watched us for sure um but it does a really good job of really kind of like humanizing a, a machine and then you understand why that machine revolts um it does a much better job than I, I would say that that the Matrix trilogy tried doing. Now this is also based on a, a movie, right? It's based off actually a Michael Crichton book written in the 1970s that was then adapted into a movie. Um, but it's definitely different than what the movie actually did, um, and it expands way further beyond that. Every season is released every two years because one of the things that Jonathan and Jonathan and Lisa try, tried doing was to make sure that they made a scripts that were solid and we're good and and that's why you should be watching this series because it's genuinely well worked on you can feel the love and the 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 blood and sweat coming out of this this series gotcha so watch it it's on hbo streaming season uh three just started tonight all right mike Um, what's your final recommendation you know uh, a lot of people have been uh, recommending it to me and they were forced is it it man (laughs) <laughs> it is if that far <laughs> no no it is uh and i and i you guys had been recommending it to me as well and I, I think i may have already mentioned it on the show but uh the mandalorian which you can watch on, on disney, disney plus P- yes which you can watch on disney plus and it's fantastic it's yeah. very it's very well done uh i know uh john favreau is a part of this and uh I I know he's. I, what would you call? Would you call him the head writer of this? Or uh, uh, he's officially written the show. I yeah, know he has. He's the EP. He's one of the EPs. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. yeah. 
But it's it's a fantastic show. If you haven't seen it yet, I, I highly recommend going to watch watch yeah. it right now. And I, Mark Filoni, I think, is the other one who's producing the the show. Okay, uh, of the Clone Wars series, uh, the the Star Wars Clone Wars, which were in fact better than the trilo- the the prequel trilogy. Um, so if if Mike, if you're bored, you should also watch the the Clone Wars series. The Clone Wars. Uh, oh, it's gotcha. Dave Filoni, not Dave, Mike Filoni. Dave Filoni. Um, and Dave Filoni, uh, what he he's uh, we we've talked about this previously. He is George Lucas's uh, right hand. Man. Yeah, he he was his uh, his apprentice. It was he was, and you know what? I if the if Kathleen Kennedy stepped out and Dave took over, I would be very happy because the guy understands Star Wars, and and everything he touches comes with. <laughs> yeah, like Rebels is amazing. Rebels is amazing. Dave Filoni worked on it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and even at that, to the point where but this is also look at who he got to direct. The Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rick from Rick from Ayua. Yeah. Uh, Dallas Bryce Howard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Taika Waititi. Yeah, that's right. Deborah Chow. Like all these directors that that he got just for this show is pretty incredible. Can you imagine like like Taika Waititi directing a Star Wars film? That would be super interesting. Uh, uh it would it would have to be a droid series. I feel like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I would great. I would love to see it though. He was great. Yeah. 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 So I'm just saying like Dave Filoni cannot do no he can can't do it wrong uh watch the brand new if you if you, another recommendation is clone wars season seven seven yeah. uh is the is dropping season? yeah it's dropping every it's dropped week. already yeah oh you yeah know, it's, it's dropping every week, every week uh-huh. and it's fantastic and it fills in the gaps between uh episode uh, uh two, two and, three. and three yeah it's a really good series got you uh, yeah there's there's a you guys got any other recommendations there's so many there's well, yeah. so many we watch so many outsiders but, the outsider, yeah. the outsider, not outsiders. Oh, the, the, outsiders, the outsider. it's a different, it's a different <laughs> thing. No, is the, that a musical? Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it's the Stephen King yeah. one. But what about? Did you have another one? It I Man, did. It yeah. Man one, It, it Man two, and It Man three. You forgot It Man four. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah there's also It Man four. No, I, I also wanted to talk about. I, I know I've mentioned this on the show before, then but why are you mentioning it again? No, I because I think it's worth watching if you haven't. When we mentioned it the first time, S- Snowpiercer. Would, no, which is The Hunting of Hill House. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. That's a great show. Yeah, Mike it's Flanagan. One of the top shows on Netflix. Yeah, yeah un- unfortunately, uh, uh, I don't know when uh, the uh, season next season is going to be coming out. Which next is year. they wrapped though. Yeah, they, they, wrapped. they did wrap. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. so they so, are in the process of editing. If they're not quarantined, <laughs> yeah, uh, that which was I believe was scheduled for release in September, but I guess we'll see. But uh, the, yeah, the season two is The Hunting of Bly Manor. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. but but yes, if you have not seen the Haunting of Hill House and you're in the mood for um, some scary, pre- yeah, some pretty good horror, which like has been uh, empty, which which yeah, there hasn't been very good horror films these past couple of months. But uh, yeah, I highly recommend seeing that TV show if you haven't seen it already. Uh, Invisible Man, that was pretty good. Yeah, it was great, but, but that I, wasn't a horror. But it, it was a suspense. Exactly, um, exactly. I, their own. It, it was. It was. Uh, the Invisible Man was, although it was a great film, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily categorize this as as horror alone. But it was good though. Yeah, Mike so. Flanagan also directed um, Doctor Sleep. Yes, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. All right, so that would do it for us here at Movie Menu Reviews. Um, we rate um, Honey Boy, uh, Spencer Confidential, and Lost Girls. Stream it. Uh, so go watch those, and we gave we gave our recommendations. So please uh, stay home. Wash your hands, stay safe, and try to mind, lessen that curb and, that we uh, mentioned. Bend the curb. Flat, flat, flatten, flatten the curb. Flatten the curb. And also just be kind to each other. Help yeah. out as much as you can. The elderly are the most susceptible, so stop please. Stop hoarding. Yeah, stop hoarding. Yeah. Buy your neighbor's food if they need it, and just be nice to each other. It's a it's a really tough time. Um, yeah, it, it you know it, it'll come. Anyways, just just wash your damn hands. So stay, <laughs> stay with us as we um, move on to the next – Phase, I guess, uh, since we'll be ending our season here now. A little bit early. Uh, a little bit early. Um, a lot earlier than we anticipated. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but we'll be back as soon as everything goes back to normal again. Whatever normal is for everyone. Yes. Yeah. Uh, on that note, until next time, thank you so much, Z. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you, Dan. I'm Dan the Man Munoz. Uh, making sure that you check out our Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube for updates. Uh, go to our website, moviemenupodcast.com. Subscribe to our episodes on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. 
And this might be a good time for check out our first episodes early on. So go back and listen and, and see where we have evolved from then to now. Because believe me, there has been an evolution. It's like Even they're exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're devolving. Uh-huh. No, no. <laughs> like, no wonder they've been canceled so many times. Uh, no, and let us know what you think. Subscribe, comment, like, and share uh, your thoughts. And um, what what are you watching at home now that you're quarantined and and uh, staying home? Um, what are what recommendations do you have? Let us know on our social media. Until next time, guys. We say bye, but not f- forever. Just for now. See ya. Two, three, four. Skip it, skip it.